Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're in for a treat because I'm going to be reviewing the most controversial, groundbreaking Japanese anime, sci-fi, post-apocalyptic uh, film of all time. And as a celebration to its 30th anniversary, it's going to be the movie Akira, or Akira, if, if you like to say it differently. Anyway. This is the 25th anniversary edition Blu-ray combo pack, comes with a DVD, that was released by Funimation back in 2014, along with Kodasha, who happens to produce this film, along with Studio Toho, that released it. And there's no doubt about it, it's a great film, I really enjoy it and it's a good release and I love the cover art they chose it's exactly like the movie poster where they just show uh, the character Kanata you know, wearing that, that cool red jacket that has the picture of a capsule because you know, he's part of the capsules game the motorcycle game and that iconic uh, cycle that he has you know, all red and and even has uh, all these advertisements, all these bumper sticker advertisements right here. Um, although I'll, this is different compared to what's shown on the, the poster, was that the the one that's in the movie they actually had uh, bumper stickers for Canon cameras, yeah, known for that, and and then all those other bumpers like Citizen. I guess they didn't put that on this poster just to avoid copyright. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, th this is a good release. This is what it looks like right here. So to this uh, DVD set, it has both the, the feature film and the extra disc, all colored. And the Blu-ray that includes the extras. Yeah, it's same cover as before. It has everything that you that you can provide here. Unfortunately, they only ported just some of the features from the previous sets. Yeah, from the Criterion sets to the Pioneer sets, so, yeah, DVD as well. That I do wish they had ported more features on this uh, bad boy right here because then it would be a whole lot better but I guess they did whatever they can to provide it uh, but the best of all for this release though was that they actually ported the original English dub version along with um, the Japanese and and the Pioneer dub as as they use nowadays in, in all their current releases yeah see this is exactly what Disney and G Kids should do when they release the Studio Ghibli films was to port the original English dub included but of course it's because of the rights issues and they're just too lazy to to provide it so that's why they can't do it but man they should learn a lesson here for for that because at least Akira knows how to do it just yeah, think about it. I mean, previously, when that film was released on Blu-ray, they didn't have the original English dub. So, this is the only release to, to provide this. So, thank God for that. I got that as a birthday gift last year. Because I figure, why not? They actually did have it at a good price at Best Buy. Anyway, the first time I saw Akira had to be sometime around the late 90s early 2000s I believe because I, I did actually saw the English dub version the original one that was from Streamline Pictures and that's the one where they had Cam Clark yes the same voice actor has been known for doing the voice of Leonardo in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the TV series as well as the voice of Snoopy and then of course the voice of Teddy Ruxpin, 
come to mind. That's the same guy. Um, yeah, he, he does the voice of Kanata in, in the, the original English dub version, so it almost kind of echoes uh, Leonardo right there. <laughs> yeah. They also have James Rapson, who um, was also uh, working on the team show, too. Hey, it's, it's cool. Guys, to see veterans. But the Pioneer dub, of course, had Johnny Young Bosch and Joshua Seth along with Wendy Lee. Because <laughs> think about it, too. Uh, Johnny Long Bosch was known for playing the Black Ranger in the TV show Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but he also went on to do the voice of Ichigo in the TV series uh, Bleach. So, so it's almost like I'm picturing uh, Ichigo. And Joshua Seth, of course, um, did the voice of Tai on Digimon. Yeah. So yes, Ichigo and Tai in one movie. Yeah, Wendy Lee done done the voice of I believe Kione in in the Tokyo series because I know they had another voice actress uh, to join in yeah as I can think of but she also had one on to do a lot of voice acting on other shows too uh, that I could think of but yeah I know I picture them when it comes to this uh, but anyway. Uh, back to this, yeah, I did watch this on, I think, on Sci-Fi Channel. And I really discovered the look of the film, the story, the atmosphere that went into it, um, the characters, the score. I mean, it's really breathtaking the way they did this. Plus, the film was ultra-violent. I mean, yes, it was very strong, graphic. I had brief nudity in those scenes. Uh, you just never forget it. I mean, it's definitely um, ahead of its time. But you know, it's amazing, even for a film that's being set um, in the future, it still holds up. I'm, I'm just kind of amazed that this movie really holds up, even, you know, 30 years. And also predicts uh, the Tokyo Olympics, which is in the movie as well, so it's cool. But I'm pretty certain it's not going to be another uh, end of the world uh, speech that's going around. Like, yeah, we're not going to have Tasu with his uh, telekinesis powers to actually wipe out the entire city, fill in destruction. Or even become a giant blob, for that matter. They do bond with each other, but at times, you know, you, you get one character who's very tough, hot-headed. I mean, leader of the gang, you know, going after those clowns, going all the way in the in the streets of Neo Tokyo, and then until Tetsuo suddenly gets all these hallucinations. After that accident that he had, when he spotted one of the uh, the Aspers, he had the psychic abilities to control. I mean, the Aspers look uh, pretty old and frail, but they just, but deep down of it, they definitely have the the psychic ability to control their minds. But Tetsu is more stronger. But Akura is based on a manga that uh, Kasuhiro Otomo actually wrote and, uh, and created, which uh, developed into a six volume series. But that was before the movie had to complete. So that's, so that's why uh, sometimes the story gets a bit complicated as it went along for, for two minutes. But either way, I mean, I can see why this movie had a lot of um, influence, impact over it. So it really shows. Because this movie um, brought an influence to uh, the Western audience. I mean, this is where all these other films follow. I mean, think about it. I mean, without a Akira, 
we wouldn't have films like The Matrix as well as um, Inception. Well, let's get to the review. I'm going to start with the Japanese version. It stars uh, Masuo Awata, Nosomu Sasaki, uh, Mami Kayama, Toro Aishara, Masuhu Suzuki, Toshoro Ganda, along with Fuku Atu, Tashihura Namura, and Katsuhuro Kamafuji. The original English version stars Camp Clark, Jam Rapson, Laura Cody, Tony Pope, Louis Arquette, Steve Kramer, Malona Hardy, Barbara Goodson, Bob Bergen, and Wally Burr. And the second English version stars Johnny Young Bosch, Joshua Seff, Wendy Lee, Jamerson Price, Simon Prescott, Bob Buxholtz, Sandy Fox, Cody McKenzie, Michelle Ruff, Michael Lindsay, Anthony Pocini, Michael Reynolds, and Stephen J. Blum. It's co-written and directed by Kashihuro Otomo. The movie began set in Tokyo, Japan on July 16, 1988, where a blinding white ball of light had expanded the entire city, which would become during the war of World War III. Over 30 years later, which is set in the future, Japan is being consumed by a rampant street crime and governmental corruption becoming simply known as Neo-Tokyo. But one night during a massive protest, that's where we meet a hotshot named Kanada, who actually is the leader of a motorcycle gang known as the Capsules, and they're going against their rivals, the Clowns. So this was like uh, the battle of the deaf right there going all the way straight uh, into the streets of Neo-Tokyo. But during the brawl, Kinata's best friend named Tsuo had eventually crashed his motorcycle right straight where Takashi is. And Takashi is a young boy, looks a little older, who's an Asper. He has all the psychic ability to control all the destruction that's going around. But he just recently escaped from the secret government laboratory with the aid of resistance organization who has been shot down by the military base. And that's where we meet Japan's self-defense forces named Colonel Kashishima who is being assisted with, with Asper Masuhu and escorts Takashi home and hospitalizes uh, Tasu, which that's where they later take uh, Kanada and his gang to the police force, being interrogated uh, about what they spot. But then Kanada actually spots K, who's an activist that belongs to the, the resistance movement and actually tricks the authorities into releasing her along with his gang. But apparently he takes interest with her. So um, the colonel along with Dr. Anishi discovers that Tetsu suddenly possesses um, stronger telekinesis powers that will be able to become more similar to a young boy named Akira, or Akira, whatever you like to say it, because he's also an Asper responsible for the destruction of Tokyo. Well, that's where Takashi's fellow Asper, Kyoko, joins in, trying to warn Chishima about the destruction that's going around that leads to Akira. Tasu suddenly escapes um, 
from the hospital and wants up finding his girlfriend named Kahori. He actually steals uh, Kanada's motorcycle but wants up being attacked by the clowns. But that's when the capsules suddenly appeared and tried to go after them and tried to save uh, Tosu and Kahori. But that's when Tasui suddenly beats the shit out of one of them and then we begin to find out that he's been getting some headaches and hallucinations that's following around. So then the military base had found him. They took him back to the hospital just to see if they can try out some more experiments for him and, and see how this is going to affect and while he was in the hospital recovering that's when he began to spot some hallucinations of all these toys that's coming from the nursery room like there's like a a small uh, teddy bear along with uh, a small bunny and a toy car that's appearing in his bed he captures it and then it disappears all of a sudden, millions of toys started to uh, mutate it into a giant teddy bear along with the, the bunny and the toy car and everything else that was going on that's already in control by the free Aspers. And it was really affecting him so much he accidentally steps in the, the glass that fell on the ground and while he was drinking some water. So now he's in control. I mean he can now have the power to actually uh, wipe out all the destruction that's going around. He basically kills uh, all the doctors and and all the, the soldiers around too. And then he just goes straight to the nursery room and that's when he spotted all the aspers. But meanwhile Kanada along with Kay and her friend along with the other guy uh, they were in the sewers uh, one of the uh, resistance was uh, going after them yeah, it turns out to be a violent shootout right straight into the sewers yeah, Kanata actually grabs uh, one of them and they actually fly out and you know, trying to control the um, trying to control the, the machine and then they begin to overheard uh, a call from the, when Tosuo actually escapes from the nursery room. I mean, his plan was to actually find out about Akira. So he winds up going all the way straight to the Olympic Stadium just to find out where Akira was buried. Yeah, and that's what led to what was going on where where he started to create all this destruction that was happening where the entire military base uh, even they brought in their tanks around just to go after him his power was so strong that he gets to control uh, bullet time and and actually begin to stop everybody actually killing everybody too um, I love the part where he was actually taking out the the red cloak and put it onto him like like yes he's ready to actually become the most powerful man ever so he gets to do whatever he wants by going all the way to the stadium trying to find where Akira is or buried that was inside a capsule that turned out that it actually has um, all these uh, chronogenic um, capsules that they have inside so that's where we find out uh, all the parts that came from the young man and that's where uh, Kanata just came with his bike to go after Tasu which becomes a battle where Kanata actually takes uh, the laser gun which the laser guns uh, were used by the military just going after Tasu. Yeah, it accidentally shot uh, one of the, the hippies on the corner. 
Yeah, so that that's uh, during the freeway ramp, and that that's where he destructs all of that. And and by the time uh, he's controlling his powers and trying to trying to go free from all the way into the satellite, and then he later came back. Uh, he wants up going back to the stadium. Uh, he found um, his girlfriend Kahori there, but he did lost his arm, and he wants up becoming mechanical. And then later, it, he actually controls his arm, that it suddenly grows into a, a huge blob. That's how he became mutated with a giant blob of mass. All human right there. Um, very grotesque, the way they did it. But it was, uh, wow, just amazing. But then in the end, the Aspers um, suddenly teleports um, Kashima, which he brought in a gun to shoot Tasu, but that didn't work. And also uh, teleported along with Kanata, and that's where we begin to find out their flashback of their childhood experience, where we see Kanata and Tasu where he actually beats up all these bullies just to give him back uh, his action figure. Yeah. So that's when they first met. And so on and so forth. But then now he's gone along with the Aspers. So the only ones that are left are you know, Kanata, you know, Kay, um, his other best friend, yeah, the colonel was there, and I think some of the other people, but but the rest of the other ones are gone. Uh, it's a very good movie. I really enjoy it. Um, I can see why this became very controversial from everyone, and I can see why this movie had became so popular. Because it, it actually brings in a lot of influence to a lot of films. I mean when it comes to the apocalypse that was going on or the uh, the telekinesis powers that's uh, going for full force uh, for the characters to control and create all these massive destruction of the city that's leading to the end of the world as we know it and and the fact that you get a, uh, a motorcycle game I you know, want the leader being hot-headed, but yet he's he's cool. I mean, he got the the best motorcycle that he ever owns. It's kind of similar to the motorcycle from the movie Tron. And he also has a best friend, even though yes, his best friend has always been treated like shit, and I can see why. I mean, he's been bullied a lot, and he almost felt like you know he's like the second banana. He never get to do anything that he wants. So now with all the powers that he has, he can control everything. So now he's the bigger man than Kanata. Yeah. I could understand the story it was a bit complicated uh, as it goes along, but that's okay. I understand because I I figured a Tom on Mud's have taken plenty of time just trying to complete the the six volume uh, manga because he started doing this since 1982 before this movie you know, came to be um, he did use all of his creativity to create this film like he actually used a mix of CGI for, for those shots that they put in um, but he also blends in with all these other um, technology that they were using for the animation to to actually process. Um, it's also interesting enough that they started the voice acting before they did the, the scoring, which by the way the score was well done. It, it really fits the mood to the film, trying to make it as futuristic as possible or sometimes just make it look really cool. 
gives us good beats. Um, yeah, the music, of course, was done by uh, Shoujo uh, Yamashiro, where he actually composed um, all the themes that follow throughout the entire story of the movie, where, like, for example, the Kanata theme, where they just use all these uh, bamboo instruments that create that wonderful beat to it. Or even the mutated scenes where Tatsuo had became a giant blob of mass right there. Or how about um, the scene where Tatsuo arrives where it leads to a battle. And that's where you hear the chorus. Like, Ja! Ja! That's her way. <laughs> Back to the animation, it was very breathtaking, that was done by Tokyo Movie Shinsha, the same people that gave us uh, all the TV shows and animated movies such as uh, Little Nemo. They actually work a helping hand with Tiny Toon Adventures with most of the episodes of the seasons, as well as all the other shows that follow. Um, they worked on many others too, they even worked on By End at Six, come to mind. Um, the way it was created though, it definitely looks as futuristic as it should be. Definitely what the Metropolis looks. Uh, it's sort of in the style that Blade Runner had. I love that and I love the scenes where you got the motorcycle gang called the Capsules uh, having a brat battle to the death with the, the clowns and I mean as they go around the movements is very stunning. The cinematography that really goes into places really uh, holds the film together. I, I really love that. Um, I love the characters that, that we provide, such as Kanada, Tasu, uh, K, the Aspers, that are looking very older and frail, but they are very young too, and they can still control the power of destructions between their psychic abilities. Uh, the Colonel, along with uh, the doctor, the scientists who uh, were trying to help uh, provide the, the experiments. Everything. It's just, just a groundbreaking film that, that just goes uh, for only two hours, two hours and four minutes. That just makes you feel like, wow, I mean, they really took the guts and effort to to provide this. Filled with ultra violence, too. I mean, the violence were very brutal. A lot of blood and gore between these shots. I mean, especially when they used the laser guns and, and gunfire and then people getting knocked out. I mean, there's even a scene where you know, one of the clowns is being knocked out and went straight into the restaurant where, where a couple was sitting and actually knocked out the guy. Or or any of or the scenes uh, where Tasu actually uh, hallucinates and it actually mutates into a giant uh, nursery toys you know, appearing. Yeah, and, and all of this that's going around, and, and of course he steps on a glass that, that actually fell on the ground, and he got all these glass shards uh, sticking to his foot. And there are brief nudity scenes too, like you know, one of the clowns actually rips uh, Hori's uh, shirt, yeah, showing her breast, or any, or any other. Anyway, it's very graphic. It does have some foul language in the movie. Not too much. The voice acting, whatever you choose, like like either the original English dub or the second English dub, or at this rate, the Japanese version. I think uh, they were excellent on their own rights. I mean, whatever your preference, if you think about it. But it's cool to have them all on one 
Blu-ray and DVD combo set, so it really works. So it's like I get to listen to whatever my favorites are <laughs> of any voice actor, just to set the mood straight. <laughs> Also equipped with surround sound or even stereo for that matter. Even equipped with THX to, to make the sound even better and crisp. Just to be as loud as it can get. Yeah, it, it just sets the presentation even better. Uh, but it really uh, holds up very well really holds up even after 30 years. It's hard to believe. So that's why this movie had such an audience for everyone. I mean, no wonder it's so popular. I mean, when the movie came out uh, in Japan, it, it only made, uh, for its budget, it was 8.2 million, uh, which is 1.1 billion yen. But it made uh, 5.6 million for 750 million yen. That's what it meant. But it did make 49 million uh, worldwide. So, for its budget, it really worked. It, it was already on the screen and they really provided very well. And I definitely love the story. I mean, I love how the way the story really went, how it goes, I mean, how we begin to follow the the whole uh, secret lab and the characters and and about the boy named Akura which was his name for the project that they were creating for that process so that's what they were doing anyway uh, it's a great movie I know everyone has seen it so I'm I think I'm cool with this review that I did and I really loved it, and I'm just glad I watched it, uh, even to this day. So anyway, I give Akira five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.